Greetings, salutations, and welcome to another Power Query tutorial by me, James, your BA Sensei. Today, we're going to be doing two things. First of all, we are going to index by a specific group. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's look at this data set. I have a list of emails. So I'm scraping an email box. They all have a subject. That email subject was sent on a specific day. So I want to basically do an index on the email subject. So to show you here, so the subject of client query one, I want to do then do an index on all the emails in that sequence one to seven. And then for query two, I want to do one to seven. And you can see by email number three, uh, four, I only want to do one and two. So that's indexing by a specific group, which is in this case, the email subject. Okay, and then once I have that, I want to then do a bit of email analysis for process analysis. I want to summarize group everything per email, count the number of emails with that specific subject, when and by who was the first email sent, who initiated the email with that subject, and then when was the last reply to emails within that subject header. Enough talking, let me show you how to do it. All right, let's pull it into Power Query. Click the data set, say from date range. Once it's in Power Query, first thing I'm going to show you is what does the function look like adding a normal index to a table? So we're going to go add column. We say index from one. Just note here, this is the, the function table dot add index column. What the table name is we're adding the index to. You give the index a name. So let's call this sequence. And this is where does it start? So our starts by one, we start numbering by one, and what the increment is of each row within that data set. So we're saying one by one, and it's a type of an integer, I'm going to delete this step, just keep that in mind. What we're going to do is because we're going to do a grouping, we want to apply the index by the email subject. So what we're going to do is we're going to group it by we're going to say transform, group by I'm going to group by the email subject make it advanced. I want to do account rows. Correct. That's fine. And I want to do uh, aggregation. Just call this count um, number of emails. And I'm going to say here, show me all the rows. So what we get is this nice little table. Yes, you can see the subject of client query one, there's seven instances. If I click on this table, it basically shows me all the emails within that table. Okay, just another thing before we go into this grouping, I kind of want to order it sort it because I want my email seek my sequence to be the oldest to the newest. So the oldest email should be number one, the newest email should be number x, let's say seven. So I'm just going to go one step back and I'm going to sort this by ascending, insert the step ascending. So you can see what we did there is we create, we basically sorted by ascending order on date and time. And let's quickly look at this whole beast over here. We have the row count. I like the row count, but you see this little each over there, that little guy over there, the details. I'm just going to paste that in there. All right. And then this change type I'm going to take out and I'm just going to make that the underscore. And I'm going to say, okay. So now if you look at it, magic, we got the index. And you can see it's actually for the old from the oldest to the newest. I'm just going to quickly make this um, call it email sequence. Cool. And you can see there we go. In order to achieve our outcome of having a list with the column that's grouped by the email subject, we need to expand on this. But you can see, I don't see the email sequence in there. If you look there, I don't see email sequence in there. So what we need to do is if we look at this last thing, we just need to add, if we look at the actual table, see the group rows there, we just need to add there email sequence and say nullable and that would be number. All right, cool. And now if you look at that little expansion thing, there's email sequence. And I can say I don't want to see that I just want to see everything else. Cool. Here you go. There is your email sequence numbering and we can just 
do it by that. Dut, dut, dut. That is requirement number one. We're just going to copy this guy out the second part of the video. I'm just going to delete all of these steps. Keep it grouped. So we go back to all the grouping. So this is where we were last time. All right. So we have the email sequence like we see there. Excellent. So I'm now want to br bring back the very first email. We go to. So let's add the first email as a column. I'm going to do click there. I'm going to say table add column. Yes. That is the table. That's correct. What's the table name? We're going to call it first email. All right. We're going to say each. And what I'm going to do now is I want to select rows from this details table. Okay, so I'm going to say table select rows. Okay, I want to select ask me from what table I want to select it from the details table because that's a cluster table within this table. So it's this one over there. And what do I want to extract there? I want to say within that I want to look for each email sequence is equal to the very first email in the chain. Yeah, I'm just going to press enter. And if you look here, there's the first email on every single one of them. Pretty cool. And then what we do is we just expand there. We say when was the received and what was the sender email It's going to keep the original. So now you can see. So now you can see when that very first email was sent. That's the date of the first email, the time of the first email. And who was it sent by? So now that we have the first table, let's see if we can find the last table. I'm going to add a new guy over there. Do the same thing. I'm going to say table add column. We're going to add it to this table. We're going to call this one last email. I'm going to say each and I'm just going to close the bracket. So there are two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the easy way and a more difficult way. So the very first and the easy way is to use table dot last. I'm going to say table last. And what is the table that would be details? That's the cluster table inside. Say enter. You can see it returns a record with the very last few, uh, the, the very last email in that chain with that email subject. So what I'm going to do is I don't like this one because it's only one email. There is no real last one. So I want to add a, a clause in here to basically have nulls for when that is one. So how do I do that? I go after the each. I say if number of emails, which is that field over there, is bigger than one, then else null. So now you can see where there we have the nulls. Wonderful. Let's expand on this. We're going to bring back the rece uh, receive date and the sender email. There we go. So now we actually have the last email sent. That's the end of the tutorial. But I'm going to show you another way to do that very same thing. It's quite a cool technique to use as well. It's alternative technique. It's not as easy as that one. It's a little bit more complex. I'm just going to copy this one out. Duplicate. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say add table, add column. We're going to add it to this table and we're going to say last email to each. So what I want you to <clears throat> notice here is we have the outer table and we have the inner table. I want to say for one of these, for each of these inner tables, can see if we look at this inner table there. I want to say if this outer table's number of email seven is equal to the number there, then return that one because that is the last email because we know there's seven emails. But if it's one, then don't bring anything back. So it's basically going to be a join on outer and inner table. Quickly show you how to do that. 
So we're going to say same thing, table dot select rows. Yes, and we're going to open the bracket. I want to do this for the inner table, which is the details. All right. And now I need to start a function. So that function, I made a video um, on each and underscore link in the video below to check this out. But this relates to that. So what I'm going to I'm going to call this function x. And I'm going to use a rocket ash like that. And I'm going to say, take x, which is a reference to this inner table, take email sequence, yes, is equal to square bracket, now I'm referring to the outer table, number of emails. So now you can see we return exactly the same thing, the very last one. Pretty cool. I hope this gave you some insight on how you can um, do indexing within a specific group and also some ideas of returning last and first values into a table. Anyway, BA Sensei out.